The Winners and Losers of the COVID-19 War Are there economic winners and losers in the global battle against COVID-19? Which countries had a smooth sailing since the pandemic started and are expected to achieve full recovery in 2022? Stay tuned to learn how COVID-19 changed the world, created stronger, more resilient economies, and other economies less fortunate who were on the state of collapse. While it continues to pose a serious global problem that concerns you no matter where you live. Welcome to the World Econ News, your daily dose of economics and finance. If you're interested in topics influencing the world's economies and global financial flows, this is the place for you. Watch till the end if you want to get the latest on everything. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification button to get the latest updates. Let's go. Let's first do a little review of the COVID outbreak. COVID-19 started making headlines when it began to spread in Wuhan, China in December 2019. At first, the majority of the people on our planet, including leaders and experts, could not imagine nor contemplate that humanity was about to face an unprecedented global crisis unleashed by the virus. Soon after, when COVID-19 began appearing in various countries around the globe, the majority of experts and people predicted that richer countries would remain relatively undamaged by the new virus because they have well-funded, advanced healthcare systems with highly trained and experienced personnel and cutting-edge facilities. However, expectations for poor and middle-income countries were not so rosy, and of course, the most poor countries were expected to be hit the hardest. As it turned out, the experts, analysts, and even the World Health Organization were wrong. COVID-19 presented to the world a huge sudden crisis and challenge. Everyone everywhere was affected. Within 30 days of the first announced case, fear began to spread super fast, resulting in a slow, chaotic, uncoordinated response. By the time the leaders and experts realized that it was not just a health crisis and would affect the education system, unemployment rates, and all aspects of the global economy, it was already too late. Only recently, the world realized that it's also a crisis of hunger and poverty in some countries, and last but not least, the crisis of governance and political stability. According to the World Bank, variants still pose a serious threat to recovery in 2022. It also estimates that in many countries, the impact will be profound and long-lasting. So if you're banking on a quick recovery, please pause and re-evaluate your expectations. Because according to the UN, World Health Organization and IMF, COVID-19 is still an ongoing crisis and poses a serious threat to public health and the financial markets. So, who are the winners and losers of the war against COVID-19? The answer is hard and, frankly, the question is inconsiderate and unsympathetic towards the millions who suffered and especially those who died due to COVID-19 infections. Before I tell you about the economic winners and losers, let's take a look at the global numbers up to this moment. Total coronavirus cases, 294,851,926. Total deaths, 5,462,340. I merely mentioned these numbers as a reminder that COVID-19 was and still is indifferent to the victim's location, race, age, sex, wealth, and status in society. Since 2022 began, many have begun to discuss the global handling of COVID-19 and its effects on the global economy. Such discussion represents a noble cause and is necessary for the development of a global system to deal with such a crisis in the future. However, the discussion took some unnerving turns and began to focus on who handled it better and who suffered less. And before you know it, the discussion turned into identifying who were the economic losers and winners, as if it was some sort of a freaking competition. According to many experts and the United Nations, this sad mentality, which is a psychological result of excessive capitalist thinking and analysis, represents a dangerous and clear threat to the ongoing global efforts aimed at increasing cooperation, coordination, and progress, not just to eliminate the virus itself, but to also resolve serious health, social, economic, and financial crises that are still storming most nations on this planet. 
I'll stop here and satisfy your curiosity about the big question by giving you the answer of who won and who lost in the war on COVID-19. I will use a simple formula that is based on how economists, financial analysts, sociologists and health experts measure the overall level of COVID-negative effects on particular nations. Its handling of the crisis and the results in terms of economic, social and health resilience. This formula is simple and consists of 1. The number of COVID deaths per million 2. The size of the economy 3. The unemployment rate in 2020-2021 4. The inflation rate in 2020-2021 5. The level of economic growth in 2020-2021 and 6. The projected economic growth for 2022 So I punched in the numbers, which was not easy The analysis was even harder And here is the answer Are you ready? China won the race in handling and defeating COVID-19. Love or hate China, the numbers cannot lie. It did one hell of a job since day one, and the measures it implemented were similar to those implemented in the USA, Russia, and Europe. Here are the numbers for China. Deaths per million, three. Average unemployment, 4.5%. Average economic growth, 6%. Year-to-year -year inflation in 2020, 2.4%. 2 in 2021, 1.7%. Projected inflation for 2022, 1.8%. And finally, the expected economic growth for 2022 is around 5%. Now, some might argue that some countries had similar or better inflation and economic growth numbers. The answer to their argument is simple. COVID-19 started in a market in the mega city of Wuhan in China. China has a population of more than 1.4 billion people. These two facts must be taken into consideration in the formula because China suffered the least in terms of deaths. Meanwhile, other economic powers such as the USA, Russia, Brazil, Germany, Britain, Japan, Spain, Italy, Turkey and France suffered thousands of deaths per million. Another argument by some experts that disputes China as the winner is the debt argument. Indeed, China has a national debt of $5 trillion. However, China has the world's largest reserve of US dollars. I believe it's above $1 trillion. Here is something else that supports China as the winner. Over the past few years, several reports by monetary funds organizations stated that China's debt is relatively low, and many economists have dismissed worries over the size of the debt, both in its overall size and relative to China's GDP. China currently has the world's largest economy and the largest population. Well done, China. Give yourself a tap on the back. Now to the next question, which countries had a smooth sailing since the pandemic started and are expected to achieve full recovery in 2022? The answer to the first part of the question, which countries had smooth sailing, is none. Why? Because every single country on earth, regardless of its wealth and economic strength, suffered economically, financially and socially from COVID-19. One look at the world's table for each country's economic growth, inflation, COVID-related debt and deaths per million, and you will realize no country was spared. Some poor countries had relatively few deaths while their economies were sent back to the Stone Age. Meanwhile, some rich countries drowned their people with money, but suffered from extremely high numbers of deaths and long COVID cases. Even China, which was declared a winner, experienced serious economic and social setbacks. Indeed, COVID-19 doesn't care who you are, nor where you're from, nor how much money you have, nor how good the healthcare system is in your country. It randomly kills and inflicts pain and misery. The answer to the second part of the question, which countries are expected to achieve full recovery in 2022? That's an easy one, and you probably already know the answer. Rich countries are expected to achieve full or partial recovery in 2022. They're followed by middle-income nations. By the way, there are 80 rich and middle-income countries in the world. The rest are by all means either poor or on the verge of starvation and total economic collapse. The global numbers, charts and analysis reports out there are messy and confusing because that is exactly what COVID-19 caused. Nevertheless, economically and financially speaking, developed and middle-income nations achieved great milestones in 2021, and the trend is expected to continue well into 2022. Here are some promising figures. 
Rich nations are projected to see the unemployment rate go down to about 5.7% or less, achieve economic growth of 5% or more, while GDP in these countries is expected to average 3.6%. These are excellent, promising figures. However, despite these promising numbers, European states and the USA are expected to record the highest COVID deaths per million people in 2022. I know what you're thinking. They learned their lessons. They have all the vaccines they need and have immense wealth. This is a paradox and experts are not giving clear answers. Hence, I too do not have an answer. However, these are mere predictions based on the numbers from the past two years. Thus, the opposite could be true. I mean, who knows what the future could hold? We could wake up tomorrow and discover that a cure in the form of pills has been discovered and it's cheap and will be distributed for free globally. You hear that? Big pharma companies are having a laugh. Again, you never know. And the well-being of the people and good scientists would surprise you. This leads us to announce who are losers in this war. They are poor countries. COVID-19 already put immense pressure on poor nations' economies. The number of people living on less than $1.25 per day exceeded $1 billion due to COVID-19. So they might not die from the virus, but they could die from other diseases or hunger due to the lack of income and access to adequate health services. In conclusion, there are no winners or losers, and no country had smooth sailing during the war on COVID. COVID-19 brought nations that are even enemies closer in the spirit of cooperation and coordination. However, there are no signals that such cooperation will be translated into a global effort to achieve global economic recovery. On the contrary, the stock markets in rich countries are rallying, while poor countries are drowning further in economic crisis, social problems, and civil unrest. Would you like to learn more about what influences the world economies and global financial flows? Click on one of the videos that shows up on the left or go to our channel to find other interesting topics. See you next time.